Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Type Media, and I'm here today at Robin.io headquarters where I'm joined by Partha Sitala, who is the co-founder and chief technology officer for the company. Partha, thank you for having us here today. Good to have you here. So, one of the things that's really exciting is Robin.io just made a big announcement about a partnership with Google around GKE. Mm -hmm. Can you give us the highlights of that announcement? Sure. Um, so, when you look at GKE, it's, a, it's almost like the gold standard of Kubernetes distributions out there. It's a managed uh, Kubernetes offered by Google, which is the founder of the entire Kubernetes project. Now, today, a lot of people use GKE for stateless workloads, uh, where most of the jobs are compute-only jobs. Mm -hmm. But there is more and more need for bringing in stateful workloads also into the fold of GKE. So you get the same agility and efficiency benefits that Kubernetes offers. Now, uh, in terms of doing that for stateful workloads, you need to do more than just providing storage. You need to do things like data management. You need to do things like migration, backups, snapshots, clones. Those kind of things are very crucial when you're trying to put stateful workloads also into GKE. So the work that we have done with Google is that Google is, being, is going to be offering GKE uh, on-premises as well. Right now it's offered in the cloud, but they also have this thing called CSP, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be GKE on-prem. And they are looking for a storage stack uh, for putting stateful workloads on that. And they have picked Robin as a preferred storage stack for uh, running stateful workloads on GKE and CSP. Now, storage is considered widely a solved problem in a lot of ways now, and mm -hmm. it didn't used to be. Why did the world need another storage player in the market? And I understand there's probably some differences in a container world versus a more traditional world, mm -hmm. but why did Robin Systems need to be around? Why does it need to be invented? Sure, so there are two parts to this. Number one is why is why Robin? Why does Robin exist? So let me start with that and then I'll talk about why does the world need a different storage stack. So our mission at Robin is to uh, enable our customers to run data-centric workloads in a very agile and efficient manner. And when I say data-centric workloads, I'm specifically tar targeting uh, things like big data platforms or data analytic, any tools that are used in the data analytic pl platforms, things like Hadoop, Spark, Cloudera, um, Hortonworks, or Elasticsearch, or even more traditional RDBMS solutions like Oracle Rack, um, Postgres, and things like that, right? Now, the problem with these workloads is that it's very hard to go deploy them. It's very hard to do lifecycle management for them once they are deployed, correct? And so our mission as a company started to make, that, make it incredibly easy to use these, these things, right? To make it very agile, to uh, enable developers to very quickly get access to these platforms and to make the life of the operations persons very easy by creating snapshots and things like that. That's how we started. Now, when you look at it, in order to support these workloads, storage, of course, is a very key ingredient, correct? Now, as you said earlier, there are so many storage vendors out there. Storage has been there for almost 30 years, and every time there's a new thing that happens, whether it's virtualization or hyperconverged, storage reinvents itself. The new thing that's happening now is Kubernetes and containers. Now, the difference between the old type of storage stacks and the new one is that, first of all, Kubernetes is, is a very agile platform. It's a platform in which you can spin up and tear down workloads very quickly, right? Uh, the number of units of deployment is much, much larger. It's not like you have a few hundred volumes. You might essentially end up spinning up thousands of volumes and managing them and tearing them down. So the first thing that you need to do is to have a storage stack that is software defined that works at the level of scale and agility that Kubernetes requires it to work at. The second thing is uh, there's a fundamental shift in how storage is consumed by uh, the folks who are operating in the Kubernetes world. In the old days, you would essentially have storage admins that would rack stack storage arrays and they would be the ones configuring these arrays. In the new world of Kubernetes, that, that role has shifted into more of a DevOps, DevOps type role where they are not necessarily storage experts. They want storage, they want to have the benefits of data management, they are not storage experts though. So you need to expose storage in a manner that makes it incredibly easy for these people who are not necessarily storage experts to be able to both deploy and use. So that's the other shift that's happened, right? So that's, that's one of the reasons why Robin exists because what we have done is in addition to providing storage for stateful workloads, we also brought the data management capabilities that are required to be able to run these workloads in production. One of the th ways I like to look at it is you've helped make storage 
uh, more consumable for developers. It's the, they don't want to have to deal with all the back end stuff, right? Correct. And now they don't have to. And they still get stateful storage, which they can't get other places. That's correct. So actually, uh, that's another point that uh, maybe I should talk about, right? So there are, if you look at how storage is consumed in the Kubernetes world, so there is a standard called CSI, which is a container storage interface. Now, any storage vendor that wants to offer their, their storage to Kubernetes pods needs to talk the CSI spec. And there are 30 storage vendors out there that do that today. So 30? 30, 3 zero, right? They're all CNCF certified, which means that you can interchangeably use one or the other. So why does the world need another storage stack? And 30 is a big number, right? I mean, so you, you would think that it's a solved problem. So why do you really need another storage vendor or why do you need a different storage vendor to be providing this thing? So that's where I think it's very important to understand what is the problem. If the problem were just to provide storage bits or persistency to pods and make that storage available when the pod fails over or there's a hardware failure, then you can arbitrarily pick from any of these 30. But that's not the problem. The problem is when you stand up, let's say a MongoDB cluster on Kubernetes, you need to do a few things beyond just providing storage. Number one, you need to have the ability to snapshot this MongoDB cluster, which is partitioned, which runs across multiple nodes in a very application consistent manner. So that A, your app is crash consistent, A, it is, and B, it is application consistent. The second thing is you would like to go create a clone of uh, this MongoDB cluster. Now cloning and snapshots are nothing new to the storage world. People have been doing that at the volume level for almost two, three decades now, right? But in the Kubernetes world, if you go and tell the developer that here you go, these are my clones of volumes or snapshots of volumes, they don't know how to take these snapshots, create a clone and attach it to the running pods. So what they really want is they would be able to do something like kubectl clone my MongoDB cluster. So which means that there is another MongoDB cluster that spun up from a snapshot that was previously taken, correct? So that is what we are offering here. So what we are saying is storage is not the biggest challenge for Kubernetes. Data management done in the context of an application is, and that is a very difficult problem to solve because for, in order to solve that problem cleanly, your storage stack needs to be application aware. It needs to understand that an application is made up of multiple volumes. Each of these volumes interconnected with each other across pods running on different machines. And once it knows that, it can go and perform application consistent snapshots. It can go and do application aware quality of service where you can go and try put IOPS controls around an entire application, not just individual volumes. So that's, that's the difference between the other C, the CSI enabled storage vendors and Robin, because we had taken this thing from volume level data management into application level data management. So if I'm an enterprise IT uh, end user in some way, shape or form, <clears throat> what does this mean for me? What does the announcement mean for me? What does a partnership with Google mean for me? So a couple of things. Number one is that with this partnership, you will now be able to run stateful workloads in production because you need to have all these lifecycle management capabilities all the way from snapshots to backups to migration. So you'll be able to do that. The second thing is um, in addition to just offering Robin storage for CSP or GKE. Uh, the Google engineering team and the Robin team have collaborated very deeply uh, in order to define a data management API set that we are going to be announcing and making public that even other vendors can, uh, can adopt uh, in order to bring their storage stack to this world, right? So it's, it's an engineering to engineering um, work that we have done to co-develop a set of APIs to kind of create a very powerful data management capabilities for Kubernetes, which is lacking today. So basically, Robin.io and Google have co-developed this API, is what you're saying. That's correct. And other vendors are going to be able to consume it. Yes. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So you guys are helping set the standard for the future of Kubernetes and stateful storage. That's correct. And it comes back to our history of, we started this journey much before Kubernetes in a way to bring stateful workloads onto a containerized platform. And uh, we actually made, so we started with our own orchestration engine because Kubernetes started in 2014 in a way for, for public consumption. But up until I would say 2018, it was not really used for stateful workloads per se, right? Even the CSI spec got GA'd only in 1.13 version of Kubernetes, which was last year, 2018, right? So, but we made a fundamental shift from our orchestration engine to Kubernetes uh, in the fall of 2018. And that change 
from our own orchestration to Kubernetes has paid off big time for us, right? One, of course, is this uh, joint partnership that you're having with Google, but beyond that, I think we have had a tremendous amount of traction where we, the, our, our entire pedigree of getting all these complex workloads to run on, Kuber, on containers, and then now being able to do that on, on Kubernetes has definitely paid off for us. So did the Kubernetes adoption just unlock the enterprise for you guys? Is that how, because they were gonna go, they were gonna do Kubernetes anyway. That's correct. <clears throat> and so it was a battle almost probably to bring in the Robin orchestration tool ra rather than just use. That's correct, because everybody was leaning towards Kubernetes, everybody was building their own tooling on top of the kubectl interface or Helm interface, right? Now, instead of them trying to do the same with our orchestration engine, now that we have embraced Kubernetes, Completely, right? In a very in a very native way, they can stick to the current tooling. They can enjoy the benefits of being part of the ecosystem, where they can bring other tools as well, right? right? Like Istio and all that, which natively integrates with uh, what Robin has to offer. And uh, the very, very unique thing is that, in fact, we are the first, and even right now, the only vendors out there who can support workloads such as Oracle Rack, SAP HANA, Cloudera. So these kind of workloads we can run on Kubernetes. In fact, we are the first and only vendor out there today who is certified to run Hortonworks cluster on top of Kubernetes because of the way we have thought about solving this problem by not just taking a, any other open source uh, storage solution like ButterFS, but kind of understanding the fundamental reason why storage needs to be done differently and how it's connected to the higher level construct such as an application and then drive everything from the application down. Very good. Partha, thank you so much for having us in your offices today. Thanks, Scott. And thank you to our audiences for watching this video.